I'm not trying to freak you out here this video, but I have been playing NBA 2K21 Next Gen for about four or five days now. Got the Xbox early, played three days on there, been playing a couple days on a PlayStation 5 now. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I've been talking to a lot of people and everybody's been having the same problem. The city is dead. I'm not gonna, so there's a lot we're gonna talk about here in this video. There's a lot of news that dropped. The devs are finally starting to say something, so there's a lot popping off. Y'all new to the channel, man, you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. We're doing daily 2K21 content and trying to do streams every couple days. Let's see that. And on top of that, let's try and get this video at 30,000 likes. Scroll down, hit it right now. I'll wait. Have you hit it? Thank you, appreciate it. I'm gonna say this off rip, I still think the city is a great idea. The problem 2K's had for as long as I can remember is servers. We've seen a peak at 2K17 Park After Dark when everything fell apart and uh, it was rappers associated with it. Like I think DJ Mustard, Snoop Dogg, Future. So that was a bad look on them because 2K couldn't get this simple event to work properly. So now you take a step back and you think about this whole city with these four boroughs, this big event center, all these kiosks, all these stores, they got garage courts, Gatorade facilities, rent -a courts you name it. It's grand in its thinking. But 2K, there is a very big problem here that I don't think you guys were prepared for. Okay, so this really hit me last night. I was recording a video that's gonna drop tomorrow. Subscribe if y'all wanna see that, put them noties on. I'm playing on the rent -a court on the Gatorade facility, I went to the top floor going on the rent court, right? And when I was joining in one of my friends so we could play together, it said that the park was 98 to 100 filled. And I stopped for a second, I thought, pause. There's supposed to be 100 people in the city? Okay, so let's just say in every borough, there's three games being played. Three and three, that's six. Six times three is 18. That's just people playing games. Now, 2K decided to add sitting animations where you can sit now and you can just lounge. Kneeling animations where you can just chill and lounge. They added all these kiosk stores, the Gatorade facilities, rent to courts these garage courts. There's so many things to do. There's no possible way 100 is gonna be enough to fill the city. You would more so need 1,000, 1,200 type people. But can you imagine what the servers will look like then? Because right now, as they are, right now it is beyond choppy everyone is reporting getting two frames per second four frames per second brutal gaming experience and this is supposed to be on next gen consoles cold man put out this tweet just a moment ago he said these parks are dead as f and someone responded saying because they only put a hundred in a park that could hold a thousand of course the solution will never change as agent said pay money to fix servers simple as that because this whole idea of a city even if you had 100 people in, that's not even enough to fill one borough. Because with all the people waiting on the Got Next, with all the people playing games, the people lounging, the people changing their animations, just in that one borough alone, 100 isn't enough. And that doesn't even include players that go AFK. So if you might be thinking, Agent, is there even an example of a game that's had like thousands of people in a server? No, I can't think of one. I remember the, the developers of SOCOM, it was a dev team called, it wasn't Slant 6 Games, it was, oh, Oh, Zipper Interactive. They developed a game on the PS3 called Mag. Some of you guys remember this game because it had a grand idea. It was 256 people in very, very large maps playing almost like war style combat. It's like Battlefield, but on a much, much bigger scale. It was an experimental type game and the game eventually flopped and the dev team went under and Sony shut them down. But for those of you who played the game, you know there was some lag, there was some server issues, not nearly as much as what we're experiencing right now on 2K21 Next Gen, but it proved that you can have 256 people in a lobby and that was on the PS3. Now we're talking about PS5 and 2K struggling with 100, even though it's likely gonna need about a thousand for this city concept to work fluently. So I'm starting to think and I wanna freak out, but I'm trying to think to myself, what is the solution if they can't add a thousand people into the server? The solution might have to come from the community and, and it would kind of undermine the whole idea and concept of the city. For example, right now, uh, most of the people I've talked to, Beasts of the East Side, those, that, borough seems to be the most lit with games so most people i know is going to the east side b side to play their games there might be a there might be a possibility where the only way you get games in the city is if everyone just goes to the same borough everyone knows all the games are played in this borough if you want to play games and you don't want to wait for five hours go to the east side b side that could be a solution but then at that point what's the point of the other three boroughs what's the point of all the experimentation and the garage courts and the dribbling around and the skateboarding and the ollies what's the point of all of that if you only play in this one area here so you get where i'm coming from right now breeze put out a post saying so are the 2k devs ever going to address the unplayable 3v3 courts in the park or is this what we got for this year and the funny part is and maybe it's not so funny it's scary is the 
fact that a lot of y'all still don't even have your next-gen consoles. You're waiting for it to ship or you haven't even gotten a chance to buy them yet. So can you imagine once you hop on? Because right now, with the few people that are on, it's a disaster. Even pre-launch, the latency was bad, but there was no choppiness. Once it launched, though, not only was there a very bad latency, but now it's choppy as f Think about the worst, choppiest gaming experience you've ever played, guys. I guarantee you this is worse than that. I'm guaranteeing it. So people are looking for solutions, and one of the solutions that people found in previous years that's becoming more prevalent right now is something Joe Notes talked about on Twitter because he said, everyone playing on broadcast because it's the only way the park don't lag. So you might be wondering, Agent, why is broadcast the angle where the park doesn't lag? And this is actually, by the way, guys, something I've been talking about for years when it comes to 2K. 2K, please. The, the city will become a flop if you don't listen to what I'm about to say next. I've been asking for years for an opportunity to just blur out the background while I play these park games. For example, let's say that we're playing threes and I'm shooting here, right? If there is nothing on this side, if it's just a wall, I'm not gonna lag. But when it flips and the other team is on offense and they're shooting this way and they're looking into the city, they have to load in all of the players running around, everything that's moving, and that takes a lot on the servers, especially with this many things going on in the city. So the lag in the city is likely to be caused by the fact that there's so much commotion in the city, so much going on that needs to be loaded in that actually is external to what I'm doing when I'm actually playing in the game. And the reason broadcast works is because unlike 2K cam, you're not looking into the city, you're looking at the floor. So there's way less that needs to be loaded on broadcast camera. So even though that was a prehistoric two decades ago way of playing NBA 2K, it might be the way you need to play unless you wanna play on two frames per second. But there is a solution to this and plenty of games introduce a solution. For those of you who played games like Minecraft or really any game that's on the PC, they give you a render distance. If you don't have a great PC, reduce your render distance. You can't see as far, they add some kind of fog or blur. Every game does this. When you play Assassin's Creed, beautiful landscape, but there's a render distance and that keeps the game from combusting into two frames per second because it only loads what you need. So then you think to yourself, Agent, didn't they do that in NBA 2K18 with the neighborhood? Yes, they did. If you guys remember, you, do you guys remember that area with the Allen Iverson statue in the, in the 2K18 neighborhood? That area had a different server than where the games were played. And 2K did that purposefully so that the game didn't become overly laggy for no reason. And this was to compensate for how bad the servers were in 2K17. And up until 2K21 Next Gen, guys, 17 had the worst servers of any 2K of all time. So that was 2K's attempt to fix their server issue. So what would happen was, when you load into the store area with the Allen Iverson uh, statue on the opposite side of the parks in 2K18, when you ran over to the park, you would switch servers. You would seamlessly switch servers. And what would happen sometimes is if you're running there with a friend, your friend would accidentally load into another server and you'd have to join in each other again. Unfortunate, but that was the solution 2K had at the time. Now, I don't know why 2K currently believes that they're capable of pulling this city off with the servers the way they are right now, but it's clear that this is not gonna work long-term. It just won't. So there's two solutions. Because there's very low load times on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, what you can do is have plenty of different servers. So if I'm on east side, B side, I don't have to have a whole bunch of loaded for me that's not even in my view. That could be a completely different server. Um, I can't edit anymore. You can't. I'm just gonna stare at him. Uh, oh, hey, can you get that? Can you get that off the door? <laughs> I'm just gonna be here for a little bit. Okay. Okay. You can be right there. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty hot in here. You sure about that? Yeah. The second solution is to have a render distance setting so I could blur out anything in the background. The reason 2K doesn't want to do that is because companies pay to be on the billboards. I know you saw see them TikTok advertisements and stuff. If you blur it out, you can't see them in the game. You can see them when you're walking around, but you can't see them in the game. That's my theory as to why 2K won't do it. But the third solution is the one 2K I don't think will ever do, and it's just to pay more. The infrastructure exists for these servers. It just costs a lot of money. And so 2K is not going to fork that up. There's three ways to solve it, man. And all of them require some kind of sacrifice on 2K's end, because the city as it is right now does not work. People, I've talked to, man, all these YouTubers saying I can't get games. YouTubers can't get games? And you know YouTubers PSNs, you wanna play with them, so it's way easier for us to get games. Imagine if you're not a person that million of people know about. You're not getting games, bro. It won't happen. So now you gotta do matchmaking. That's why a lot of people are grinding on the wreck. Are uh, you good? You good back there? Well, I don't think I'm gonna head out. You good? Okay, you good? Yeah. Are you good? All right.
Get back to editing now. Okay. Yep. That was too long of a break. He took a break for one minute. <laughs> Preposterous. 2K, the limit can't be 100. The limit has to be at least 600, but I'm saying if you want the city to be lit, it has to be 1,000. And 2K, you know what these solutions are, bro. I'm saying them in these videos, man. There's three of them, man. But that's actually not where the things end for NBA 2K21 Next Gen. Uh, Sin put out a tweet saying, hopefully Next Gen dribbling gets reverted to current gen dribbling. So for everyone that's been experimenting with dribbling so far in Next Gen 2K21, all the talk about the new combos and the new dribbling system got everybody gassed, all the dribblers gassed. And it seems as though um, this year, the dribblers have been limited more than any other year in years past. Did that make sense? What I, what I, is that English? What language I just say? And this is something that I know every dribbler has been talking about. G-Man said the same thing on Twitter. As of now, this is the worst dribbling 2K I've played personally. Badge Plug responded, so clunky. G-Man responded, we shall wait for Steezo's annual Twitter dribbling clip. And that's actually, believe it or not, what everyone is doing right now. They're waiting to find out if Steezo can break dribbling, because as of right now, nobody's been able to figure it out. Steezo actually put out a tweet saying 2K21 next gen dribbling was very ass, and I had it in my DMs, but he deleted it. That might mean that he figured something out and we just don't know about it yet, who knows? But what we do know is it seems severely limited in the combos that people are able to do. For me personally, because I'm not a dribbler, it kind of feels smooth to me. But I'm not the people that do this. I have a goddamn 80 dribbling with tier two dribble moves, but I just, this guy, this is how I dribble. Uh, uh, drive. <laughs> and I sit on the hash looking all pretty, man, getting ready to click square. Buckets, you feel me? Hey, good time to remind y'all, subscribe to the channel, drop a like, let's try and get the video to 30,000. There's been more glitches and bugs in NBA 2K21 Next Gen. I knew there would be. It's a pretty grand idea. There's no way they game tested it properly. And it seems like there might be a real, real reality that they just didn't game test it at all. Um, there was a clip that NBA 2K21 News account put out. He said, first look at the chopper bike you get at All-Star 1. It's super slow. Don't buy it. And the, keep in mind, this is if you could even get to All-Star 1 as I full screen it. Because there's a Pro 3 glitch that's happening where some people get to Pro 3. And every time they get to Pro 3, it lags out. And so they can't even get to this chopper part of the game. But for the people that did get to it, you quickly realize that it's a very slow bike. <laughs> Which kind of defeats the purpose of it if it moves slower than a skateboard. It kind of does look all clunky and gimmicky too, but whatever. I mean, it's not a goddamn biking game, so I'm not going to expect great physics there. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it costs a boatload of money. So if you do spend that boatload of money, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you're going to be riding like. Everyone I've talked to so far is holding out hope that like NBA 2K21 Next Gen is have so many great ideas, but we're waiting on the implementation of them. And the devs, they've said a little bit, but they haven't said much. Like right here, we have um, Eric Bonish uh, talking about face scans. But like we right now, I guarantee you, I don't think nobody's thinking about face scans. We're thinking about server issues and if the city's even going to be playable in the near future. So we need kind of those need two things to be addressed right there. I, I know without a shadow of a doubt, this is not like an issue they're oblivious of. They all know what's happening. It's probably why we're getting radio silence from the gameplay devs and from the publisher side. But man, we're in an interesting situation where a game that has so much promise is just largely unplayable. And when more people get on the servers, it's gonna get worse. And this is evident because most people's experience so far has gone like this. They hop on Rookieville, and the latency is bad, which means the servers is already cheeks. But there's no choppiness, because Rookieville is actually its own thing, right? But when you make it into the city, because it's all hosted on one thing, that's when it begins getting choppy. To the point where I've talked to people where the fr the, fr the frame, I'm fucking stuttering here, the frame would freeze for seconds when they're just walking around the park, just skateboarding around the park. So 2K, these are all issues you need to address ASAP. I'm telling you right now, there's solutions that exist. And as a person who's not even a developer, I've, I'm just throwing them in the air, right? So I guarantee you these developers have way more solutions. So y'all have to just, boom, y'all have to be going at it. Cause this game mode right now, unless you're a YouTuber on stream, you are not going to get games, just not possible. And a hundred people in one park can't happen. You need at least 600, but I'm saying, bro, 1,200 will be the key. Imagine how lit it be with 1,200, bro. Imagine how lit it be. I think this is finally going to be the year where if 2K doesn't implement some kind of render distance, render distance setting, it's game, set, match. In previous years, it might have been a little choppiness on the side courts, but this year it seems like you can't play 
the way the game is right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go hop on my career uh, to grind my badges. And by the way, just to let you guys know, a couple people have told me about a my career glitch where if you play my career, your, your badges get glitched and they don't get progress anymore. But I'm gonna do it anyway, just because the city's not playable and I need to play something. So my career it is, I might even be streaming it. Subscribe to the channel, man. Throw on the notice to catch some stream notifications. If y'all new, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Drop a like, man. Let's see that run up to 30,000. <sighs> I hope they can figure it out, man. Cause this is a great idea. And it'd be very, very sad if months from now, it just goes down the drain for no reason. I'm out. Peace.